Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey. I am Rob, your host, and uh, getting ready to get into a a fun show. As you can see by the, the title of this episode, uh, a show that uh, we all smile when we're doing it, but maybe uh, feel a little regretful or a little guilty afterwards, and maybe a little heavier. I'm not sure. Although I did find out something about dessert, and I'll, I'll touch on that here in just a few minutes. But before we get started, I do have a couple of announcements I wanted to make. Well, First, let me start by saying I want to thank everybody who listens and supports the uh, the podcast. We really appreciate it. We, we've we noticed that we've been growing and getting more downloads and reaching more uh, places around the, the country and the globe, and we really, really appreciate that. And if you can continue to listen and subscribe and share, give us a review on Apple or Google. It really means a lot to the show, and we appreciate that. Um, I did want to touch on a couple of things. We are going to, for the podcast, for Food, Wine, and Whiskey, we are trying to put together an event that's going to happen in February of 2023, so a few months away, but it's going to be a food, wine, and whiskey, um, call it a get-together, an event in Austin, Texas, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be people who support the show, people who follow us on social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, things like that, and listeners. So if you're a listener and you're in Texas and it's something you might want to attend and be a part of and have some fun, uh, reach out to us on our social media pages, Food, Wine, and Whiskey at Instagram, Food, Wine, and Whiskey on uh, Twitter. We have a Facebook page as well. And uh, let us know if you're interested. Send me some inf- uh, a message, and we'll make sure we get you the details on that. But going to be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to putting this together, and we'll give you more details as we have it. The other thing I wanted to mention is Food, Wine, and Whiskey is going to launch our YouTube channel, but it's going to be focused on wine. So it's going to be titled Into the Glass, and it's going to focus all about wine. I'm going to have a co-host on the YouTube channel, Chris Rulin, who's a diploma at WSET, and we're going to start putting that together here in the next few weeks and uh, should launch. But we'll keep that information in front of you as well. As soon as we get something that's going to be released, we'll let you know when that date is. So looking forward to that as well. Here we go, jumping into this episode. On the on the podcast for the first time, Brittany Bastone. How are you, Brittany? Doing great. Really happy to be here today. We're talking about one of my favorite things on the entire planet. Absolutely. And... Your husband's been on the show. If people don't haven't put the connection together, your last name, Luis Bastone, is your husband. He's been on the show a few times. And when this topic came up as a potential podcast episode, you made it very clear you <laughs> needed to be on this one. I am, in fact, the dessert lady. <laughs> I must go everywhere with two desserts. One is just not enough. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So let, let's start by, this is going to be a top five. And, and how tough was it first? Let me ask you that. How tough was it? to Because <gasps> me and Carter, when we've done these top fives, or anybody who's done one with us, we always kind of chuckle because it's not always easy to come up with just five. And, oh. you know, I usually make a long list and then, struggle to narrow it down to five and that's why we also have once we've uh you know released both of our top five lists we'll we'll talk about some honorable mentions perfect because i probably have 50 things on my list um it's incredibly long it is hard isn't it very 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 involved so so let's start by me asking you what was your criteria for forming your list and the reason i'm asking that is because some people might go well, what is dessert? I mean, is dessert kind of an elevated, you know, air quotes, fancy sweet that you have after a dinner only? Or is is dessert a, a Kit Kat sitting on the bar with a little bit of milk? Uh, I find dessert to be very much a composed dish. Okay. So something that you've baked or something that has been put together. Um, so I thought about ice cream a whole lot, uh, but that's something that I would put as part of a composed dessert. Um, so something you would bake something, something created, um, pastry is kind of its own section of dessert. Um, so I thought about that a whole lot. So I I think you're exactly (laughs) right because I think there's some categories we might touch on within the dessert arena that we might say deserve their own kind of top five episode. Oh, very Uh, much. And and there might be a lot of these that you could, but for this one, we'll do this. But if we mention one or two or exclude one or two, it might be because we've both maybe thought that that would be on its own. Yes, I was very specific on my list. Um, I I thought about it pretty hard, but dessert's a very tricky thing. 
Yeah, and I agree with you that uh, a dessert to me is something prepared, something that, you know, I keep coming back to the word elevated. It's, it's taking some time and effort, some thought to put into it. Uh, you know, we think about classic desserts, but desserts like cooking, you know, is is a blank canvas. I mean, you can get so creative and come up with some cool things. I mean, I watch cooking shows and dessert shows on YouTube all the time, and I go, I would have never thought that you can make that and make it a dessert, and it looks, you know, tremendous. Oh, I, I mean, I'm constantly watching shows like that for inspiration and awe, awe-inspiring cakes, especially um, some of the new shows that have been coming out lately on Netflix, um, yeah. Master of Chocolate, um, Is It Cake, which is, you know, absolutely hilarious. So I love the, the spotlight dessert has really gotten and the place that it's really been elevated to. Yeah, because when you start talking about, I mean, there's some desserts technique when you when you talk about chocolate and then you talk about people who work with sugar i mean that's way beyond anything i could even dream about trying to do in the kitchen for me it's kind of the desserts that well let me just say this my criteria for picking my list was things that i enjoy eating and making on a semi-regular basis uh because there's there's some fantastic desserts that i've had but it's like going to this restaurant and, you know, this special restaurant made this fabulous dessert. And I'm like, I would go back there and have it, but I'm not going to have it again unless I'm back in New York City or back on the West Coast or wherever I had that. It's very unique to that, you know, the creation of that that chef. And so those are like, you know, if we went through a category of those, I could list you uh, some tremendous, you know, desserts that I've had. But these are going to be focused more on ones that I can make when we're having a dinner or a gathering or get to go get together or ones that I just enjoy eating and want to make it on a, on a weekend or something like that. That was also part of my criteria. I thought about what dessert would I eat right now? Yeah. Right now in, in any moment whatsoever. And if it was, uh, that sounds kind of okay. Like, nope, take it off the list. Okay. So I thought about anything that was like, okay, I could, I could go for that basically at any moment. If it were put in front of me, I'd be down. Even if I had just finished Thanksgiving dinner, I am ready to dig in. I'm with you. And I, I did a little research on dessert. Cause I was like, okay, where does the word come from? Because dessert to me doesn't trigger anything about sweets or anything. So I didn't know where that name came from. And it's the, the French word from, and I'm going to butcher this, desiriere, which translates to, to clear the table. And so this was to wash down the aftertaste of a large meal. And that's where dessert, it's to clear the palate. Oh, and so I thought, well, that kind of makes sense then, you know, because I didn't know where that, the, the term dessert came from. It explains why I want dessert after breakfast. Clear that large meal out. Just, you <laughs> if know. you have a big breakfast, right? Of course. It doesn't have to be a big breakfast. <laughs> just dessert at the end. <laughs> now, what I also found out is there's a reason people do that. And I didn't know this. You know, I thought it was just me being bad, wanting some sugar in my system, right? Your, my body was like, man, dessert sounds good. Well, it turns out that sugar stimulates a relaxing effect in your stomach, which reduces the sensation of feeling full or bloated. <laughs> And so I did not know that. So I guess it's the chemical makeup of our bodies that when we go, man, I just really want some dessert and I feel full, that's the body saying, help me out a little. So now I'm going to eat more dessert, Brittany. I'm just going to eat it all the time just to make my stomach feel better. Well, of course, you know, and you know that explains so much. I always said that I'm like a sloth. I have three stomachs. I have yeah. one for regular food, one for dessert, and one for wine. So <laughs> that 100% explains food, everything. Well, wine is a food category. Well, it's made out of grapes. Sure. It's, it's a fruit. It's still a fruit. Yeah. It's absolutely your fruit for the day. You're not going to get any arguments here. My wife's sitting here, and she's shaking her head yes very, very vigorously. Absolutely. Okay, let me ask you this. Can a dessert be something other than sweet in your opinion? Can it be after dinner just a nice coffee? Can it be some cheeses or nuts or something like that? Can it be savory? Can a dessert be savory? I don't think so. I don't either. And, you know, I love making savory. I actually mostly make fairly savory sweet desserts. I love using a good pie crust for like a tomato pie. Um, I think you can use the techniques gathered in dessert to apply to savory, but I don't think you can call it dessert at that point. Is quiche dessert? No. 
Yeah. I, I wouldn't call it that. Now, on How about the top- a souffle? You know, that's a good point. <laughs> I I think it just depends on the preparation of yeah. the souffle. I think a cheese souffle is a great appetizer. Yeah. I think um, a Grand Marnier des- souffle is your dessert, yeah. which, you know, I would never argue against. I will have souffle for all of my courses. As far as an after-dinner coffee or sauterne, I would consider it to fulfill the craving of dessert. Kind of the cherry on top? Yeah, just a little cherry on top, okay. a little something. I love me some some sherry, some sauterne, some ice wine, but I don't think I would classify it in the category of dessert. Yeah. However, it could definitely fill the hole that is left in the meal. No, but I totally agree with you because you know, no matter what you're eating, you want some kind of beverage to go with it. Always. And dessert is no exception to that. It, it, you know, depending on the dessert might be what beverage I want. There's some desserts I want coffee. Mm-hmm. There's some desserts I might want a sauternes or something sweet, a sweet wine. And there's some desserts I might just want a nice glass of milk. You know, oh, so, I, I know that one. Yeah. I know so, that feeling very well. Um, I did a little research and the, these, these were the top 10 categories of what are classified desserts. All right. And they are cakes cookies this got to come from england biscuits yeah i'm guessing some kind of but pastries was on there right after that so i'm going yeah. scones or maybe something like that is their biscuit versus a pastry which might have filling or I'm not sure how they differentiated those two yeah candies is on there which kind of surprised me custards and puddings okay <laughs> deep fried like churros and things like that frozen which gets into your ice cream jellos and gelatins and then fruits. I think I agree with all of those except for candy. That's yeah, a me sweet. too. It's a sweet. It's and delicious, it's, but it's the only sweet. reason I kind of gave it a little bit of a you know leeway was I go okay, some people might make a homemade candy, you know, chocolate covered peanuts or some, a cluster or something like that with caramel. And I got okay. Would that be called a candy? I I don't really call it a candy, but I was trying to figure out how they put candy in there because to, to me, candy's made and I open a wrapper and I eat it. It's not really. To our point earlier about you got to make it. I would still call it a candy. I like to make homemade candies, but typically I put them on the cake. Um, Or, yeah, I do something with it to incorporate it into the dessert. Um, I'd still call it a candy, or you could just go, depending on its ingredients, call it chocolate. Okay. And that's just a whole other beast entirely. (laughs) Let me ask... uh, Is there any amazing dessert that you've had at a restaurant that you want to make at home and you haven't been able to? Because I know you love to make desserts. And I I, feel like you can make about anything. I'm just wondering if there's anything that stumped you. That's a trick. That's tricky because usually no. Um, I will sit there. I actually... I had a friend come home from uh, her trip to Napa recently and brought me some brown butter um, salted shortbread cookies, and I'm pretty sure I'm about to nail them. Oh, so I've I've kind of figured that out over time. Um, you know, a really perfect pie. I have a mental block some days about pie crust, and there are just days that I would give my left pinky to be able to roll out just the most perfect pastry dough, including like baklava. A perfect, Do you beautiful make a feel of dough. Oh, absolutely. I wish, I wish. But that's only, that's, I mean, frozen dough, yes. You know but who I makes would, one and has a great recipe oh, he would share with us? Recipe. The Soterans, Matt. Oh, man, we're going to have Matt to. Matt made it, and it was fantastic. We're going to have to roll out some phyllo dough. You know, he's Greek, and his grandma's recipe, and he he made it, and it was oh. absolutely stunning. It was beautiful. I mean, oh. he made it so well. And he's got a whole book of grandma's recipes and baklava was in there so that sounds amazing you know Uh, no go ahead in hindsight um the um the chocolate milk the at uchi um Mm. it is it's like the frozen milk fried milk fried milk at uchi fried milk yes it's so good um and that is probably one that and mostly i just haven't attempted it because i'm afraid i'm going to burn my house down um with the deep fryer um you're basically deep frying like canals of like very loose cream um 
I I would love to try that, but I'm a little afraid. <laughs> What's the outer texture of that? I'm trying to. It's not battered, obviously. No, it's just very. It's very crispy, almost like corn flaky, um, but okay. like very very finely um, ground. It's delicious. I'm thinking I've, about like a, oh. a lightly floured like fish fillet that just has that very thin layer of crisp on the outer edge, but then everything else is... A little more like the way that fried ice cream is done with fried like ice the, It's a little thicker then. It's a little thicker, but okay. like crispy. Um, okay. Not necessarily flour, but like crunched up like okay. cornflakes. Uh, here, here, let's do a little nostalgia. What was your favorite dessert, you know, sweet treat as a kid growing up? Oh, um... Peanut butter cookies. Easily. Was it really? Oh, but... So it was something homemade. It wasn't like, I thought you might go Blizzard or something like that. Oh, no. Like, I I used to just bake when I didn't feel good. Um, so, but I got to really? be honest, I have not used Crisco shortening since um, I, at least since before I moved out of my parents' house many, many years ago. Really? Um, but I, I You're literally... You're a butter gal now. Oh, uh, full, full butter, yeah. full fat all the time. But I'm telling you, the, the recipe from inside, the Crisco shortening of peanut butter cookies, I just loved it. And my dad loved them too. So wow. we would share those all the time. Okay. You ready to jump into our list? All right, here we go. I'm going to have to pull mine out because it took so long that I've just gone so back and forth over everything. You get to go top five. Okay. We go... Five to one, so All we right. build up a little suspense to what you put at number one, okay. and then I'll do mine, and then we'll talk about, uh, and you can give us a little reasons why you picked these and put them where you did, and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll do some honorable mentions afterwards. Okay, sounds so good. fire away when you're ready. All right, here we go. Uh, number five, chocolate chip cookies. And you know, like, really good chocolate chip cookies. Um, and I, I don't mean to call people out. There's been a major chocolate chip cookie craze um, retail location that we're not has, talking about Nestle. No, <laughs> that has really um, had people going crazy, and to me, those are like too sweet. I like a really salty mm-hmm. chocolate chip cookie, um, and that is just it hits the same nostalgia as the peanut butter cookie. So it, though very simple, it is a very classic dessert. It belongs on the list. I agree. <laughs> All right, number four. Okay, is lemon meringue pie. My, uh, yes, lemon meringue pie. And really, to be honest with you, anything with like a really good lemon curd will suffice for me there. But specifically lemon meringue pie, my diabetic great-grandmother um, would have one of those or a cake ready for any time okay. I came to her house. And I made it a mission of mine to really figure out how to make good lemon meringue pie. Um so I'm a big fan of that, uh, it, but it's got to be with meringue on top, of course. Toasted meringue is okay. heaven when made well. My number three is chocolate cake. You know, that scene in Matilda never grossed me out. I really just thought, I wish I was that kid with all that chocolate cake. So that is, chocolate cake is where it's at. Um, uh, um, number two is churros. I... Just love me of good fried dough, but do you make churros. I do make churros, oh, okay. um, but my favorite churros are this little spot in Mexico City, and I say little spot because each individual one is tiny, but there's like fifty of them. It's called Churreria El Moro, and there's like they're open till three o'clock in the morning, and they're on well, every street corner. Just the typical churros that are I don't know, you know, an inch in diameter and probably twelve to eighteen inches long. Oh, I yes. can eat fifty of those. Oh, same. I can I mean, just never just, stop. Yeah, they're so good. And any dipping sauce. My wife, being from El Paso, me living there for so many years, it's a very popular dessert, you know, or street food kind of. If you see food trucks, there's always a churro food truck around that's making, you know, you know, we went kind to of like the. Uh, what, what's uh, for, for for the white people like me out there? Um, what's the carnival food? That's the uh, funnel cake. Funnel cake. I Thank also you. make funnel cake. Do you I really? Do. I yeah. really do. Churro and funnel cake to me are the same thing. Just you know, the American version versus the that only, is, only that cinnamon versus you know. It's fairly sugar. close. Very close. Yeah, it's I think close. of those. Yeah. Um, my number one I chose because I could eat this whether it is good or bad because I will get it on every road trip to Bucky's. And that's banana pudding. Banana pudding? Banana pudding is my number one. And I did figure out how to make homemade Nilla wafers so that I could satisfy that craving without going to the grocery store. Um, and you've had ba- bad 
banana pudding and said, I'm still eating this because even though it's not yeah. good, it's good. Yeah. And like, really? it always, like, even the Bucky's, like, it's been packaged for a couple hours. Like, it still hits the spot. And I have no idea why, but banana pudding. I, I did not expect that one on your list. There was another <laughs> one that's not on your list that I thought would be on your list. All right. I, I'm, well, I'll get into my list in just a second. <laughs> Is there any crazy dessert? that you've seen that you went, that's not going to work. And then you go, oh, that does work. Here's one I saw. haven't had it yet, but I, I kind of want to try it. I saw it on a YouTube cooking show. It's Oreo creme brulee. You know, that sounds delicious, but that's I'm also... I'm not sure, does it? I, it kind of does. So the thing that I'm always searching is for those combinations. Yeah. I'm always looking for something weird. Right now I'm working on a Thai peanut butter cookie. Oh. So I kind of like peanut sauce style, but cookie form. Okay. So I'm always searching for those impossibilities. That's interesting. So that's that's my favorite thing. I love those impossibilities okay. about baking that you can constant and actually that'll that'll come more into my honorable mentions. Actually. Okay, <laughs> well, and, that, and the Oreo creme brulee I thought was weird, and then I go that might be kind of good. And the way they did it was they obviously separated the filling from the the cookie, and then they put the filling in with the egg to make the custard. Oh yeah, and then that would they work. they crunched up the uh, cookie and also put it in after they got the custard kind of made. And then they baked it, like you would, with the water and everything. And then coming out, they still put sugar on top. And and that's where they kind of lost me. I would have done it a little differently. Okay. But I would have uh, probably, like, soaked my cream in Oreos and then drained it and then made the custard from it. So you're not compromising any texture situations. Oh, that's but you'd get the flavor. And then you're still getting the flavor. I like that. And what I thought was you would save some of those Oreo cookies on top crunch them up really fine, maybe in a food processor, and then just sprinkle those on top with the custard versus putting sugar. You'd still get the crisp, but if you still wanted the burnt, you could do like a really good vanilla yeah. and then still do the Oreo on top. But I was going, I'm not sure if I want the burnt with the Oreo. Oh, I always want burnt you always sugar. Want the burnt sugar. <laughs> I like that. Okay. All right. I am. I thought we were going to have uh, more of the same, but we have a couple that are okay, cool. the same. And starting off, number five for me is like you. And let me just say this. Ice cream's not on my list at all. Not because I don't like ice cream. I love ice cream. But it's one of those that we talked about that I think deserves its own category. Because ice cream flavors and the way you can make ice cream, the way you can use ice cream, I think coming up with five ice cream desserts uh, could be a fun topic that you could do. Plus, you have sorbet and gelato you have to toss you, in there, too. I so totally that's agree. just too complicated. <laughs> if you ask my wife her favorite ice cream, it's sorbet. She loves a, a, an orange sherbet. Sorbet. That is also Luis. Yeah. His, is that his favorite? Oh, he is more into the the tart, tangy um, sorbets or like Mexican like paletas. Oh, okay. He's he, like a good mango chile paleta is amazing. Well, you brought up Luis, and he's not a dessert <laughs> really guy not. by, you know... <laughs> For real. But there's a few he likes. Yes. And we, we ought to make notes. Since you're the dessert queen, he he likes what's his favorite four desserts that you make. He couldn't even get and to I, five. People, I was going to say, people are going to go, why only four? Why not <laughs> he five? Because he get couldn't there. get there. Yeah. So um, carrot cake. I make him a really? carrot. Yes. Carrot cake for his birthday every single okay. year. Um, and I do a little bit different every year. This year was a caramelized pineapple carrot cake. Turned out. Very good, I if I must say so myself. Um, tres leches. Ooh. Yeah. A Sandra good, and I make a really good tres leches. We will have to try that sometime. Yeah. I do love tres leches as well, especially from Truth Barbecue. That's my favorite. Okay, just to be, yeah. I, I'll disappear from the table and buy three pieces of cake. So okay. Luis keeps an eye on me there. Uh, um, <laughs> and his last two are pies. So strawberry rhubarb pie. Okay. And vinegar pie. I have never heard of vinegar pie and i know people are listening going well that just doesn't sound good so back when chris shepherd still had underbelly open it was our favorite thing on the dessert menu we would get it all the time we would sometimes just go get a slice of vinegar pie um if we were in the area and it said you know upon having it i was like okay this is this is really weird i why would you use vinegar? So it's actually an old Great Depression Southern pie. 
Uh, I typically uses, uh, I use a combo of apple cider and a little splash of white vinegar for mine, but it's okay. very much like, um, like a custard pie. Um, okay. but you know, a little, a little more not as loose. It's more, yeah, not as loose. Yeah. It's a little bit more set. It's just very tart. Um, they used to top it at underbelly with a salted, um, like sugar kind of shard. Um, and I've tried to, you know, I've tried to do that shard and I have not come close to it yet, but one day, one day I'll okay. get there. Um, uh, but vinegar pie, it's, it's really delicious. I actually like to make it around Thanksgiving cause it's got a very like cinnamony warm, it screams Flavor. fall, holidays, winters a little bit. Oh, very much. And sometimes I'll like put a graham cracker crust with it instead of a regular pie crust just to, you know. So that, that makes me ask you this. I, I have my opinion that I think there's certain desserts that I enjoy year round. Yes. And then there's certain desserts that I want in the warmer months. And then obviously in the winter months there's some great desserts yes and i've said to carter a couple times i'll just give an example i think pies are spring and summer and uh cobblers are fall and winter (laughs) which is interesting because um lime and lemon season starts now and ends in february so i make more lemon meringue pies now than i do during the summer but for me the summer is for key lime pie okay i like to put a mezcal um like oh. kind of marshmallow topping on that and like torch it. Um, That's interesting. It's pretty delicious. That's my like summer. But I, I also have a coffee cake that uses basically the same as a cinnamon roll dough that I make every Christmas. So Coffee cake is coffee cake. very underrated. And I didn't even think to put it on my list, but you mentioned that and I go, that, I forgot all about a coffee it's cake. It's different than your normal coffee cake. Okay. It's yeasted instead oh, okay. of being like a So it's not fluffy. dense. It's not dense at all. Okay. It's yeasted and filled. Okay, that would be interesting. With yes. still that coffee cake flavor kind of profile. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> you've, you've piqued my interest on that one. I make them for Christmas every year. I'll come bring you guys one. Okay, so I said right. ice cream, not on my list. Yes. Because it deserves its own category. Yes, it does. But number five on my list also deserves its own category and probably will get it, but I like them so much, like you, they made my list. I, I tried not to, and I just said I can't. I like them that much. Chocolate chip cookies. They're really just the best. But they have to be made right. They do. Because I agree. They can't be too gooey, ooey, chewy, and they can't be hard. My wife likes a hard, crunchy <sighs> cookie, and I think you're ruining the pleasure of eating a good cookie. It's got to have just, it's just got to have that good balance of firm, but you know, you can bite and take a bite, and it comes off without all the crumbs falling, but it's nice and chewy, and, and especially when they're fresh out of the oven, warm. <sighs> I mean, there's nothing I enjoy more. And my daughter, I give her all the credit. She has mastered making homemade chocolate chip cookies that I absolutely love. Yeah, they've got to be just perfectly soft and chewy in the middle, but like crisp on the outside. Yeah. It gives you all of the experiences in one bite. Yes. And that would be a dessert. I go, milk is my drink with that. I love a little milk to wash down. You know, anything chocolate, I like milk. Um, number four for me, like you, not in the same position, but also on your list. Chocolate cake. It's just amazing. And I hear you make an incredible one. I love to make chocolate cake. And I, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I make a pretty good <laughs> chocolate cake. And when you make, you know, a good frosting and everything, you can layer it and build stacks. I mean, to me, with a cup of coffee at the end of the night, a chocolate cake and a nice cup of coffee is, to me, a great dessert. And... I'll even have uh, a piece of chocolate cake and a cup of coffee maybe after breakfast the next well, morning. Breakfast dessert. It's yeah. a thing. Yeah, it is a thing. <laughs> Which makes me ask the question. I'm, I'm going to go to number three, but are, are, uh, are donuts a dessert? They're breakfast. So just, I actually just had this conversation today. Is it today. a snack then? A, a sugary snack? What yeah. about cinnamon roll? You know, the, also breakfast. I mean, but the thing is, is I'll eat breakfast for dinner anytime. Oh, I'm with you. So... It, it's more breakfast, but you can eat breakfast whenever you want. <laughs> Here, here's, here's one that you're going to have to put some thought to. Where do you rank Pop-Tarts? <laughs> I'm kidding. I actually love Pop-Tarts. Do you really? I really do. Um, that's like a horrible thing. I also make homemade Pop-Tarts. I wanted to ask but you that. But I am a huge... Oh, God. 
That is probably my nostalgia category. I love Pop Tarts. And I mean, I taught. So as a kid, that was your thing. That's actually my dad's thing. And uh. he's like going to be 60 next year. Uh. Um, and he still loves Pop Tarts. Uh, he's a brown sugar cinnamon guy. I was ask that. I'm more of a strawberry kind of girl. See, I used to be brown sugar cinnamon growing up. And then I moved on to the fruit. So strawberry and cherry, I love. I've also seen him hide or well hide because he's hiding them from me. Oreo pop tarts. So oh, I've never seen those. I oh, didn't even know they made those. I think they're a '90s thing. Now that I think about it. Okay. But kind of came and went. Yeah, you know, thinking about nostalgia again, pop tarts. Yeah. That, that's interesting because <laughs> I was wondering about donuts because I think pastries are dessert. Yes. And you and I both have spouses who are Hispanic, mm-hmm. and so the Mexican pastries to me are a dessert, <gasps> and they're delicious. They're also breakfast. Conchas are breakfast. But they are, but I eat them at night sometimes too after dinner. Well, I mean, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I have five chocolate chip cookies, four chocolate cake, which mm-hmm. is fantastic. Three for me is another cake that I fell in love with. Uh, a friend of mine owned, owned a restaurant in mid-Missouri where I'm from, and he made a hot apple cake. And when me and Sandra were over there one time visiting probably 20 years ago, he was nice enough to give me his recipe. Oh. And every since then, wintertime is when, that's when I talked about we have certain desserts, I make a hot apple cake. And it's that, you know, diced up apples with the cinnamon, a little nutmeg, and you put it into your cake batter like you, you think you would. You bake it. And then when you top it, you, you toast some walnuts. I mean, not walnuts, pecans. And you make a caramel sauce. And then you put your toasted pecans in the caramel sauce, and then you drizzle that over the top of the cake with a a nice cup of coffee. And uh, one of my favorite desserts in the wintertime, hot apple cake. Because you warm the cake up, and it's nice and warm. when You you know, because some cakes, chocolate cake, cut a slice, doesn't matter. It can be out for a day. I don't care. But this is a particular cake. When you get a piece, you warm it up so it's hot. And the crisp of the apple, the cinnamon with the caramel and the nuts, and it's just a... It's a pleasure. I will have to try that sometime. Yeah, hot apple cake, one of my favorites. Um, the next one for me, number two, one of my all-time favorites, and I'm finally hitting a pie, pecan pie. Okay. I respect that. Uh, I mean, if it's, it's I, look, I'm stumbling. I don't even know how to describe it. Just, it's just got such good flavors and just so many components to it. Uh, and it's all sweet. I mean, it's not it really. Good it's for it's you. literally sugar. Yeah, pecans. it is. <laughs> but it's five different kinds of sugar. But like you know, molasses and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. Done the right way, it comes together and is a beautiful thing. And I have to say, I agree with that. I used to hate pecan pie. Did you really? Because well, it was only sweet to me. But um, until we were on a road trip to Austin off 71, and we stopped at Hruska's mostly for lunch, and they just had one of the tastiest pecan pies. It wasn't just straight up sweet. It was, it was just more than one note. And since then, I've just been on a quest to make my own really, really good pecan pie. Yeah, pecan pie. I, I didn't grow up being a fan of pies in general. Uh, it wasn't until later on in life I started kind of exploring pies mm-hmm. and quickly became a big fan. I mean, who doesn't? Like you said, it's five different kinds of sugars and some nuts on top. That's all it's it is. It's delicious. It's just so good. But, I mean, what's not good that's just loaded with sugar for the most part? Oh. Right? That's dessert. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's nothing that comes to mind. So pecan pie, uh, definitely top five, number two. Number one for me is what I thought might be your in your top five for okay. at least, and it never made your list, and I thought it was going to be at number one, and we're going to be the same, and it didn't make your list at all. Bread pudding. I do love bread pudding. Bread pudding <sighs> is one of my favorite. Hey, I mean, it's at my number one position. Bread pudding, and it might be, I might be, uh, because cold weather's coming, you know, m- mentally I'm, my psyche's going, what are some great desserts in the in the fall and winter? And bread pudding might not come, you know, July. We have another update on our top desserts. It might not be there. But right now, going into fall and winter, bread pudding is one of, I mean, so warm and comforting and relaxing after dinner. Just makes you kind of, you know, slouch down in the chair and go, that's so good. And it's really all the best parts of dessert. You've got the pudding. You've yeah. got the carbs from the bread slash pastry. You've got... Whatever you can really imagine to put in there, it's really 
flexible and versatile. I do love bread pudding. I did not start liking bread pudding until I started making it with croissants. With croissants? So croissants so are my bread, choice. You toast those and get them like crouton hard or not? Uh, not fully hard, but most of the way pretty pretty hard, pretty crispy and But it's still so toasty. flaky and stuff. But what is it, what, what's the difference? It just what's soaks the, is, it right up. So it's just a better texture for you? I, yeah, I just like the texture more. My teeth aren't all that great, so like... Bread that's been like kind of soaked, you know. I feel like I'm chewing on it for a little okay. bit, but with the croissants, it's just like flaky and just falls apart. So does does croissants. any of that buttery kind of croissant flavor come out in it as well and add to the? Oh, very color? much. Like okay. croissant bread pudding for me is the way to go. Wow. I just I, it's yes, it's it's just the way for me. And you know, I've had bread pudding and other locations i think we had it at gordon ramsay's restaurant once i was like this has to be standard bread pudding but it was okay okay i i I may have to try that and do you make your own croissants because that's a chore no and i was gonna say i I would probably um, go to costco and buy the big thing or heb of their that's exactly what i do i go to costco now this is the time of year that i will start doing more pastry because it's cold enough outside to not completely ruin everything that I've worked for for most yeah. of the day. So this is the time of year that really works for that. Okay. Any Anything with my top five that you go, why in the world would you put that in there? No, they all make sense. Okay. And I feel like we have a pretty similar top five. Yeah. I mean, you had chocolate cake. You had chocolate chip cookies. You have banana pudding. I have I bread do. pudding. So we're kind it's, of it's kind of there. It's just a pudding different category. carb, you know, so, vehicle. Let's have some fun now and jump into honorable mentions. And uh, we may go a little further than that, but I'll let you give two. I'll give two, and we'll kind of go back and forth. So Tress Leches made my primary honorable mention. It's delicious. You know, it's you can't really beat it. I like to top mine with mango. Personally, it's. It's the way, but my number one honorable mention, I chose for a very different reason. Okay. I like this honorable mention applied to most dessert types. And for me, that's s'mores. Really? I do. I like to, I like making s'mores pie. I've made (sighs) s'mores cookies. Okay. You're going to have to sell me on that because I'm going s'mores s'mores ice cream. like, Like a donut. It's to me, it's not a... It kind of, I mean, it's a campfire yeah, it's a, tradition, but yeah. for me, there's just those flavors. And I okay. think for me, and I'm, I'm known to really hate, I call them raw marshmallows. Just like watching, uh, just like <laughs> watching somebody eat. I, I will choke on one. Uh, it's I, just, it's so you. gross. But it, you know, the moment you toast it, it just becomes this beautiful gooey, um, heaven and I've I've made myself um, chocolate cake with like graham cracker filling and marshmallow frosting for my birthday, but just s'mores applied to s'mores as them, themselves, but also applied to any type of dessert. Okay, so you, you went with tres leches and mm-hmm. s'mores. S'mores. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of mine, and mine are in, in no particular order because I just kind of have them listed, and I think they're just. So good that I just threw them out there. I didn't really rank them. But I'm going to say one for me is kind of a general category. I didn't really get specific because it's it's something you can be very creative with. But I will say I, I would focus more on berries and fruit with it, which would be a parfait. Interesting. Now, is that breakfast? No, it's a dessert. It's a dessert. Sure. Have you ever had a like a key lime parfait? Or, you know, just a strawberry, blueberry parfait layered and you just I mean, have I've, it with some texture in there. And I've had it for breakfast, like a strawberry, you know, strawberry, blueberries, granola, a little well, that, cream. That, that's kind of, I think that's a different kind of parfait. Kind of like okay. a tomato pie is a pie or chicken pot pie is a, a pie, mm-hmm. but it's a savory kind of, I think that's kind of a. a okay. But you can make a parfait, a parfait completely a, a, you know a chocolate mousse parfait with some nuts and caramel and yeah. build it up and layer it in it i never really thought about you know assigning the word parfait to it because i make a chocolate mousse parfait uh-huh. style dessert that's just layered you just call it chocolate mousse well 
I also call it trifle. Okay. Sometimes, like if I make a really big one, yeah. I'll, I'll make like a. But I'm using a trifle bowl. But I think any British person, what you know, listening to this would be like, that's blasphemy. That's oh, not really? a trifle. But I mean, I I've made a banana pudding trifle before, so you know. And 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 so you're struggling with that. One. I am struggling. That's okay. really got me thinking. That's yeah, I got love, me thinking. I, I've made some. What I, well, I call them a dessert, and I make them for after dinners when we have to. It's, it's that dessert that when we want something sweet after a meal, and I don't want it to be super heavy. And it's usually mm-hmm. in the summertime. You know, light fruit, the creaminess in there, the you know, and it's just uh, little nuts on top. That's, I mean, that sounds delicious. Um, the other one I'll mention in this round will be, this can go savory or this can go sweet. Obviously, the sweet one would be a, applied for desserts, but crepes. Oh, crepes were on my list. Okay, they they were. were pretty okay. high up on my list. Yeah. I spent an entire summer perfecting crepes. Um, Your crepe pancake? Yes. Okay. I, my, my husband's grandparents just absolutely love them. We would put some fresh, like, cajeta in there with, like, just, like... People a, aren't going to know what that is. So, cajeta is, like, a goat's milk caramel okay. um, with um, sliced mango, and they were just so happy. We, um, I love crepes. So, that was also pretty high up on my list. Yeah, that, to me, sweet is one or of my savory. favorites. Sweet or savory. Yeah. Sweet and or savory. Savory, absolutely sweet for this particular podcast. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll throw it back to you now. You have a couple more? Oh, man. It's just so tricky. Let me pull out my list. Oh, I put cobbler on mine. I, I think cobblers are great. And again, we're Love being a little cobbler. general because it's very you know, general. Blackberry, blueberry, peach, you know, you can go all different directions, but a cobbler to me is absolutely should be mentioned. And you can top it a million different ways. You yeah. can, you know, a lot of people like to use biscuits. I'm a big fan of like, the kind of granola y streusel topping, little combo of the two. Um, See, and I make, oh, I make like a dough crumble, like a biscuit crumble, yeah. and then just put and let it cook on, on the top. I don't discriminate. I okay. like all cobblers. all cobblers. I prefer them in a Dutch oven, but you know, those are a little difficult to clean afterwards. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I've made one that's not been in a, in, well, not a Dutch oven, but I'll make it a lot in the, uh, I got a big 14 inch cast iron pot. Mm-hmm. Ca- cast it. irons required. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you have another one? Um, let's see. I had a ton on my list. I thought you might mention what you brought this evening. I did. Creme brulee. I do love creme brulee. I'd say that's probably, if Luis were to think about a number five, that would definitely be okay. his number five. I did not add it onto my list because to me, it's something that has to be just perfect. Okay. And frequently when you go to restaurants, it is overcooked and has just, it's very solid. Um, and it Sometimes I feel fluffy. like they, they've left it too long, you know, not made it yes. fresh that day and maybe it's a day later. Or, or they'll overbake it and really I, I leave it to where it's, you know, a little more jiggly than the recipe it's says it should. It's got to be jiggly in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely. mine's a little further out than the middle really? when I pull it. But okay. it, it makes it a lot lighter <laughs> and fluffier and I mean... I love creme brulee, but I didn't add it for pickiness sake. So what about bananas foster? Also delicious. I mean, really, when you burn things, I know that burnt sounds sugar, a little ridiculous, like. yeah. but I love burnt sugar. So here, I love bananas foster. And if you remember at the beginning, I said my criteria was things I eat a lot or not a lot, but when I make dessert, things that I go to most often. And I, as much as I love Bananas Foster, I don't know why I don't. It's not that hard to make. I just don't make it that often. But when I, for whatever reason, get the urge to make it, and I do, I ask myself, why don't I make this more often? It's really good. It's simple. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I don't eat it more than I do, but it's a fantastic dessert. And a lot of people might think I'm nuts and go, you're an idiot. You should make that more. It's a top I think a lot of people that we know, especially being down here mm-hmm. next door neighbors to, you know, Cajun people, uh, True. Bananas Foster might be on a, a lot of lists. I think I would put that on my ice cream dessert list. Because it has to have it ice cream. It has to have company. ice cream. Yeah, if it, if that, it doesn't, that's a good point. If it doesn't have ice cream, it doesn't work. That's a very good point. Yeah, it really belongs on that list of ice cream desserts. I mean, without 
ice cream, you don't, you just have burnt sugar and bananas. So it's, it's definitely an ice cream dessert for me. So now I'm going to fire at you and ask you this question. I feel the same way about apple pie. Apple pie, I don't want it by itself. But you throw me two scoops of vanilla on top, and I'll tear that thing up. You know, I have to agree with that because I'm a little un-American and don't really like apple pie. Yeah, on its own. It's not that good. No. It, it's, it's okay. It's got texture issues for me. Okay. It just needs that ice cream to really drive it home. Yeah, and that's why I didn't make my list. I went, I got to have ice cream with apple pie. I, I can't just put it on there. Um off the top of your head, anything else you can think of? Here's I got one more if you don't. You know, any other fried dough, though. You know, you mentioned funnel cake, but I also love beignets. Ooh. Just fried See, dough. See, you say beignets, and I think about El Paso, all the restaurants you'd go to, the Mexican restaurants, you get sopa pias. Oh, sopa and pias, the too. the honey that you just make, you know, make a hole in the middle and steaming and pour that <sighs> honey in and... Is there really anything better than fried dough? In yeah. in central Mexico, they call them humuelos. Oh, really? And they're a little bit different. They're they're also fried, but they're a little lighter and fluffier. Okay. And um, if you go to Oaxaca and get them, when you finish your humuelo, you take the clay plate and you break it on the ground. Oh. It's, nice. it's a whole experience. You got anything else? I think that's it for me. I, I can't got a couple think more. of ready? any others. I'm going to say right, this I'm one, ready. and I think I'm going to get a reaction from you. Oh, no. <laughs> Flan? My husband's mother makes an excellent flan. I would never dare step on her toes. Do you Not like in a million flan? years. I like it as part of our every year we have it on Christmas and okay. or on New Year's. Um, it's more of a tradition, like a tradition that she makes it. I don't make it very well. Unfortunately, I just... You've tried. I've tried, and it just doesn't come out as fluffy and light as hers does, so I'm just going to leave it to the expert. And then how about the Italian version of Tres Leches? Tiramisu. Tiramisu is... Pretty it's good. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty. I've it's never pretty tried good. to make that. I know. I think Carter and Yana make a version of it. It's a bit of a nightmare, but it's worth it. The it homemade is. lady fingers are really hard, but okay. if you can get a, if you can nail them, it's worth it. And is this one gimmicky? I'm firing at you now. Oh, you? I'm. I'm about. Is this gimmicky or is this good? The molten lava cake. Good. Okay, I agree. <laughs> I mean, uh, come my on. Kids, my kids <laughs> love it when I make those in the ramekins. They think, but again, I didn't mention it because you got to have ice cream. It, oh, it really does. Otherwise, it's just too much. But I mean, like, I mean, who doesn't love okay. just like chocolate everywhere? I'm, and it's, it's just ooey, amazing. gooey, oozing chocolate yes, everywhere. Yes, everywhere. Yeah. And it's, it's very messy, but it's worth it. I yeah. also love Molten lava cake. Yeah, I do too. It, it didn't make my top five, but it's one that I, I really enjoy. I, I have one more that is in the, the ice cream category, but I just wanted to throw it out on this episode because it's one that I enjoy. I, usually I don't like dessert right after dinner. I know a lot of people want to have dessert right after. I like to wait a little bit. Uh, and when we have like burger night or something, mm -hmm. and especially in the summertime, uh, my favorite dessert after is making a homemade chocolate milkshake with a two ounce dump of bourbon in it about it yeah now if with my ice cream that would maybe kill you because i already put bourbon in Do you it really i yeah. actually had um a zoom meeting that i had had a little bit of ice cream before and um, forgot and well, I forgot how much bourbon was in the ice cream and was maybe a little bit tipsy for that Zoom meeting. Uh oh. Um, but I can agree with that. I think bourbon, I think alcohol in baking just makes everything better. Well, and bourbon and chocolate to me just have a relationship that works. It, it every time, regardless yeah. of the bourbon, it works every single time. Yeah. Okay. My last question before we close out this episode. Are there any holiday desserts that you absolutely love, but only during the holidays? Because pumpkin pie I love, but I only eat pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. Then I never, it's kind of like turkey as a meal. I eat it at Thanksgiving. I never eat it the rest of the year. You well, know? I've, I've got a couple. Okay. I've got a couple. Right. So I actually don't love pumpkin pie. Okay. A lot of people are that way. I do, but I have figured out a pumpkin pie creme brulee kind of combination situation that has been pretty good. Um, I 
love cranberry. Um, for Thanksgiving, I am actually making a pistachio uh, dark chocolate and cranberry tart. I only ever make that during November. Um, I won't even make it for Christmas. So that sounds good. That's one. Um, Luis's mom makes one that's called uh, Carlotta da Pina, and it's just this like frozen pineapple cake. Okay. We also we only ever have that on Christmas. Um, so there are some things that I just like to keep them special. Okay. It, I'm trying to think of other holidays. It seems like, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving are where you really think about it. Is there, I guess, it's Valentine's Day, maybe. Is there a dessert that you associate with Valentine's That's more candy That's to me. That's more like, to me, that Chocolate would be the molten lava cake. Or molten I would, lava. I would make okay, that, that for sense. Valentine's. Um, Apple pie for 4th of July mm-hmm. that I really don't do. Or that brownies. Much. Where do bron- brownies fall for you? That's a, brownies and fudge, not high up for me. Not very high up. I like it when brownies are interesting, and they very rarely are. Um, but, wait, they're brownies. I they're mean, brownies. Put some walnuts in them or something. That's or like it. make them a little less sweet and kind of layer them into a fun Let dessert. Let me ask you this. Are you a bigger fan of the cake type brownie? Or oh. the more dense, dense, br- chewy, Do fudgy you really? brownies. Yeah. yeah see, I'm cake is cake, that. brownies are brownies. Okay. Got to stay in our lane. <laughs> what about fudge? I don't love fudge. I don't either. It's yeah. a little bit too much. I it's mean, t- way a, too much. A little bite and you're done. You know, you can't really. A little bite. <laughs> I, I, I like desserts where, you know, not that I should, but I can eat a bunch of it. You Same. Know? Absolutely. Yeah. You I don't want, want one bite and be like, okay, that's why cheesecake, not on my list. I mean, so rich. Now, and, yeah. I have a question for yeah. you. It has actually come up recently. Okay. Um, cheesecake, is it a cake or is it a pie? I would say it's a pie. Okay. What would you say? I say it's in its own category. Okay. I wouldn't argue that either. I say cheesecake is cheesecake. For sure. But I was also not given that option (laughs) when when that question was asked. And I just, if if it were closer to something, it would be a pie as it has a crust. But I I think cheesecake is cheesecake. Yeah. It's also not on my list, but I do love a good New York cherry cheesecake. There's some cheesecakes I like. And, you know, not very many desserts I don't like or won't eat. I might Agreed. go. Not not a fan of brownies, but put a plate in front of me and, see and if I'm I don't gonna grab eat it. one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, it's it's depending on who makes it and how they make it. It can just be one or two bites, and it's like, Ugh. yeah, done. Uh, but I also I have had some that I I think are really good. I will say I'm probably more of a traditionalist with cheesecake. I like just the classic cheesecake. I don't like getting into all the different chocolates and caramels and as do I. I yeah. fully agree. I okay. cherries all over it and yeah. call it a day. Graham cracker, crust, cheesecake, cherries, yes. done. Yes, totally agree. Okay, anything we're missing that, that's popping up that you go? We didn't mention this, and we probably should. I cannot think of anything, but I imagine several people will comment with all of these desserts that we did yeah. not mention. There's just so many that would make people's list. I think so. And I, I love that you can be so creative with desserts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think people are a little bit, you know, I think cooking in general, but baking especially, because, you know, people will tell you that ba- cooking is just, you know, splash of this, this. You can't really do it wrong. Baking's more of a science. You need to be, you know, accurate and kind of specific on the measurements that you're using. Even though that sounds intimidating, to me, it's really not. It actually makes it easier. If you have a good recipe, you can, if you follow it to what you're supposed to be doing, you can make some really good desserts. And I say that to say, if you're not cooking and making desserts at home, you should be. Because being able to have a, a dinner party and some guests over and having a dessert after or going to a dinner party and saying, you're cooking dinner, I'll bring dessert. It's, it's a cool thing to be able to do. I fully agree. And just for a little tip for looking for good um, baking recipes, they will always list ingredients in the order of which um, they're used in the recipe. So if they do... How you put them in. Yeah. So if they do mix flour first, they'll put that first. I, I know it's a bad recipe instantly if they have added something that they didn't do before or if ingredients are out of order. I automatically know to never, ever base any recipe I've ever used off of that one. Yeah. Order is necessary. Are, are you like me? Any recipe I get, I make it the way it says, and then I figure out how I might want to tweak it. 
Do you do the same thing? I have notebooks on top of notebooks okay. of my own recipes that I've just, you know, ratios are a beautiful thing. And the more recipes you bake, the more you understand the ratio. Oh, absolutely. The more you can tweak it just due to experience. Yep. Yep. Uh, last thing for you. Do you have any favorite you do? In the world we have today, it used to be, you know, recipe books. You just read it, follow the instructions. I think YouTube is fantastic. Because you can actually see somebody doing the steps. You can see what it should look like. You can see what the results should be. And it kind of gives you this idea of when you do yours, what you should have, what it should look like during each step, things like that. Do you have some favorite YouTube? Do you watch YouTube for for inspiration or ideas for, for baking? I watch YouTube for decorating ideas for cakes for okay. I love it to me it's the it's like a second version of art okay. uh, but I also love cookbooks so we have a large collection of cookbooks that I'm constantly baking out of so I do a little bit of both are they classics or are they new and kind of innovative cookbooks or a combination, a combination. Of both? it's okay. a combination yeah. I I have a molecular gastronomy book that I like to break oh. into around my birthday yeah um, but I mean joy of cooking has great recipes in it you can't yeah. deny the classics absolutely well this has been a lot of fun awesome Brittany, yes. thanks for doing it uh really enjoy talking about desserts can't yeah wait same to uh Try the creme brulee you brought for this evening. Oh, me too. Three so, kinds of sugar. Thank well, you for three kinds. Of, mention that real quick. This is, I never <laughs> even thought about this, but you have three different kinds of sugar that we can pick to, uh, as you like to say, have burnt sugar on top. Of course. Uh, I made a lavender sugar, a coffee sugar, and a vanilla sugar. Just takes time and patience. Which one are you going to go with? I think I'm going to just go with uh, the vanilla sugar stick with the classic I'm a coffee fan so I'm, I'm I think you'll go, like it yeah I think I'm gonna go with coffee <laughs> well thanks everybody for listening to this episode of food wine and whiskey and until our next episode enjoy your next pour thank you Brittany for doing that thank you